in the name of the beloved Son, for the sake of the beloved community. Amen. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's just too little love. All you need is love, everybody. All you need is love all together. All you need is love, love. Love is all you need. I grew up with all those songs. And they always make me feel kind of all jiggly inside, and they put a smile on my face. Love. We've heard an awful lot about it today as well. In an order that might sound a little familiar, you may remember that last week we heard from the book of Acts and someone was getting baptized. Today in the book of Acts, people are getting baptized. We heard a lesson from the Epistle of John last week, talking about love. Guess what? Here we are again from the Epistle of John, talking about love. Last week, we heard from Jesus in his last discourse with his disciples in the upper room. And here we are again with Jesus in the upper room. How did we get here? How did we get here from our trip from Easter Sunday? Remember Easter Sunday? Oh, man, wasn't that something? Ah, love Easter. People, music, gladness, flowers, beauty, hats. You know, Easter is great. But now, here we are, a number of weeks later. How did we get here? We began running to the tomb and hearing that first rumblings that Jesus is on the loose. A week later, we were in the house, still not sure what to make of all of this, when Jesus appears for the second time and with our friend, believing Thomas. And then things begin to take a bit of a turn. Jesus has some breakfast with us, with some fish, And then suddenly Jesus is talking to us about something that's yet to happen. That's how we got there. It's really a course that we should have expected. Because what happens when there's a big event? The big event happens, and then you begin to think about it. What does it mean? This huge thing has happened now. Where do we go? How do we put it together? That's how we've come down through this and why we end up with these segments of Jesus' teaching as we come to this latter part of the season of Easter. And what's on his agenda today? It's a four-letter word. It's good old love. It's such a huge term. And it is, of course, the foundational characteristic of God and the foundational characteristic of those who follow. It's such a big deal that it's hard to get get your arms around it. So today I want to talk about love in terms of the three C's of love. Three C's. Not the only way to think about this, but one way to get a handle on it. Three C's. Care. Choose. Commit. Care. Choose. Commit. Commit. Care, choose, commit. Caring. We kind of throw that word around kind of lightly, but it's a big word in the scriptures. In fact, in the New Testament, it's one of my favorite words. It turns out that in the scriptures, especially when it's talking about Jesus, it uses a word from which we get our English term spleen. What in the world does caring have to do with your spleen? Well, think of it this way. If it's here that it hits you, we might think of caring as something that goes to your core. Even a, dare I use the word, gut feeling? Something that happens deep inside of you. It happens when we open our eyes and see what is happening in the lives of others. 
It happens when we notice that, I think the word that we used this morning was dissonance. When we see that something is not as it should be, we see it and it hits us here and it opens us up and it says, ugh. It begins sometimes as a twist and develops into a sense of one's heart going out. Now, that's a risky business, caring like that, because we all know what happens when you, can, when you care and sometimes get disappointed, or care and get taken advantage of. That gut reaction can turn into a sucker punch and make us want to hold back from caring. But the invitation of Jesus, the command to love one another, is a call to care. To let that uncomfortable feeling in our guts settle in and happen. And to let, us, and to let it move us. And that's what brings me to that second C of love, choosing. Because there is indeed an, an action piece of love. When the scriptures talk about Jesus looking at the crowd, they say that he has compassion. He has that gut feeling right in here. He cares, and then he chooses to do something. He begins to teach. He heals. He does the miracles that call people to see that the kingdom of God is coming in his embodiment and is now coming into their own lives. He chooses to act. Think of our friend, the Good Samaritan. Interestingly enough, the word that is used of him when he sees the man in trouble, beaten on the word, on the road, he has a gut reaction. His heart goes out to the man. And then he chooses to do something. He sees him. He picks him up. He binds up his wounds. He puts them on his own animal. He takes them to the end. He cares for him there, and he even makes sure that there's an opportunity for his ongoing care. And that actually brings me to my third C of love, committing. Committing to the ongoing peace that love brings us. Peanuts is one of my favorite cartoons, and um, well, one of my favorite pieces of that is a cartoon where um, Charlie Brown and Linus are outside, it's a winter day, and they're bundled up. You know, they got their big hats, and they got their big coats, and the coats are so heavy that their arms have to stick out like this, you know, so they're all nice and warm in the winter. And they see Snoopy, the dog, shivering on the ice. And they, their hearts go out to him, and they go up to Snoopy and they say, be of good cheer. <laughs> yes, be of good cheer. And then they walk away. In the last pane, you have Snoopy still shivering on the ice, and now he's got a question mark over his head. What in the world just happened there? You can see him. Uh, somebody cared, I, I think. Someone sort of, kind of, did something, I believe. But then they disappeared. And here I am, the same old person, now not just cold, but confused. <laughs> Part of the call to love is the call to commit, to stay for the long haul. Not just the movement of the minute or the flavor of the month but to stay there and when, as they say, the cameras are off, when the press goes away, it's the long haul of love that committing leads us to. Now, I should say, because we often hear love as an individual thing, that when Jesus uses the word today, every single time he does it, it's in the plural. It's not just you love, you love, you love, you love. It's y'all love one another. Y'all will follow my commandments, and this way you shall love y'all love. 
It takes a community for Christian love to truly manifest itself. It is great for us as individuals to go out and do the specific things that we do day after day. Great, wonderful. If I can borrow a line from the hymn that we sang at the beginning, I, I want to give you a, a loud cheering people on that. Wonderful. However, it is when we as the people of God following Christ together sit down and say, how shall we love? What shall we do? That we begin to move in a powerful way enough to actually bring about an expansion of the kingdom of God. I've been thinking about these issues in particular over the last couple of weeks here. The um, Bible study piece that's been happening between the services um, has, has brought me uh, back and into some deeper connection with the new Poor People's Campaign and a number of the thoughts and the religious thinking and the theology underneath it. It has been a remarkable conversation, and yes, this is a blatant commercial for this. I invite you to come and be a part of those conversations because it's about how shall we love? How will we do it? And how do we think about it as a community together? Because that's where that love becomes powerful and becomes a witness to those who will not ever come inside these walls. Now, this is not the only way to think about love, but I just want to kind of say, so you've got these three pieces. You've got care, choose, commit. They're always in this interplay. They're always kind of bouncing off each other. Sometimes as we move into our commitment, a new door will open in our hearts. Sometimes as we decide to do something, it will lead us to a different kind of commitment. Sometimes as I'm choosing, something may say to me, oh, here's something I didn't see before, a new opportunity to care. These three are almost in this, this, this dynamic relationship. You know, you've got care, choose, commit. Care, choose, commit. Care, choose, commit. You can almost kind of, you almost kind of feel it, can't you? Care, choose, commit. Almost got a little action to it, you know. Maybe a little music to it, you know. Care, choose, commit. Care, choose, commit. Care, choose, commit. And sometimes the dance is slow. Care, choose, commit. Sometimes the dance is a little more intense. Care, choose, commit, choose, care. Commit, care, choose, commit, care. Choose, 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 care. Commit. But the dance goes on. And we dance with the partners that are each other. And not only the partners that are inside this building but the partners that we have outside in our community, the partners that we have as other congregations, other agencies, other individuals, a partnership even across the globe. We dance in this amazing dance of love. Sometimes we fall flat on our faces. Sometimes we step on each other's toes in that dance but always God's grace and love lifts us up, calls us back into the dance, the true dance of love, to care, to choose, to commit, to care, to choose, to commit, to dance on.